folks. Uh, uh, over Christmas I've been very lucky to have a bit of time off and I was able to watch a few of my um, my subscribers videos uh, which is very rare for me I mean often I'm in contact with um, with my subs but uh, I never get to watch their videos just pure to time uh, purely due to time and uh, being able to get to watch them um, so I did for once watch one of uh, one of the videos as well as some from uh, Code Grey uh, watch some of his as well and uh, there's a channel called Goofy Bastard I uh, know that's a <laughs> I don't know every time I hear that I just laugh give myself a chuckle uh, Goofy Bastard and the challenge was was to talk for 10 minutes without any edits or any cuts in the video now for anyone who's got a YouTube channel you'll probably understand how difficult that is because it really is really tough to, uh, when you push that record button the camera starts rolling and quite often your brain and your mouth stops moving. It's got that mag I don't know why it is, you can be prepped up as much as you want to be on uh, getting ready to film and as soon as you push that record button everything goes to crap. It just, everything goes out your mind. So, I think my 10 minutes has started, according to this clock, I don't even know how accurate that is. I'm going to give it a go for 10 minutes, and that, I, I have included the 10 minutes in the intro here, okay? So we will see how it goes. So, where shall I start? I've got a few topics. I'm going to start with uh, the death of a very, very uh, amazing comedian. Um, proper old school, uh, a chap called Jeffro. Now a lot of our American friends won't have a clue who Jeffro is, but there's a little um, patch of land down in the, the, the bottom of uh, England, uh, or Britain should I say, the UK, called Cornwall. Not many people down there, it's just a few. Um, there's a friend of mine, Saddlebag73, he lives down there. And um, yeah, he lived down there, and uh, he was born right down the end, where I used to have a, a, a holiday time show, actually, all my family did, down near Camborne. But as a comedian, he was like no one else. Uh, I mean, a lot of people struggle to understand him because his accent was so broad. But he was so funny, um, and it's unfortunate, really, due to copyright, I can't cut in any of the jokes that he does and I certainly can't tell a joke to save my life so I'm not even going to bother trying but uh, he was proper old school um, jokes but not only that but something that really shone with him was his uh, really genuine personality he never went out to be famous or become the best comedian and ironically that is exactly what happened to him so uh, he wasn't very well for a long time. He was uh, he had the old dreaded C, and then he unfortunately died of died of the uh, the other dreaded C, um, that being COVID. So yeah, I mean that's the first thing I want to start on. You know what uh, what a loss, not just a loss that it is, but you know people like Jeffro are irreplaceable. You'll never forget another Jeffro again. And there's very few old school, um, old school comedians left now, you know, like we've lost, uh, who else have we lost? We lost Bob, Bob Monkhouse, he was somebody who could, you know, string up a one-liner, no matter what the topic was. Yeah, so anyway, let's just leave that one there, but yeah, very, very sad to lose Jeffro. Um, and comedy, like so many other things these days, is just dying of death because of the council culture and people getting offended too easily. Well, actually, all it means is that normally people just want to have a moan because they just enjoy moaning and uh, being disruptive. Um, and I think that's a loss as well. 
you know, I've been recently watching some some old uh, Jim Davidson stuff, and again, I think he's a fantastic comedian. He's he's very funny. And yes, sometimes they do overstep the mark. But, you know, come on. It's all down to uh, perception, really. What's that other word I'm looking for? Oh dear, this is what I'd normally cut out, you see. Perception and intent. That's the one. <laughs> I can't even cut it out. Oh, help me. It's all down to intent and, you know, a joke is a joke. And if you lose... Uh, your sense of humour and it's something my old man always taught me you know to uh, even when he was on his last legs my uh, dad would you know still make jokes and uh, I remember him saying at the end you know where he was sort of saying uh, we're talking about B&Q which is like your Home Depot in the US and um, we were saying about the new one that's opening and uh, he, he knew he only had a couple of months left. I remember him saying to me, oh, he said, oh, I'm not really bothered about that uh, crappy B&Q opening up. Because, <laughs> which you had to be there at the time. But it was actually quite funny because what he meant was, I'm not going to be here to see it anyway. So, you know, just great, isn't it? You know, that's what gets you through these times. And again, even then, I've got a fond memory of him, you know, just cracking a joke. Um, but these days, yeah, always people wanting to have a good moan, isn't there? And, and basically just ruin it. And then the papers get out of it. I hate the press. I hate the press and I don't particularly like uh, any news channel, really. Even I, I turn on, uh, you know, Good Morning Britain and... Uh, what's the other one? The BBC one. You know, I turn it on in the morning. All you hear is the same, same rubbish all the time, isn't it? All doom and gloom, and you know, just provocative crap, basically. And it really winds me up, all that. But anyway, let's try and keep it uh, positive. So, what have I done so far? I can't even remember. Alright, Jeffro, I've done. Did I get onto anything else? Jeffro. Oh no, this is where I need... You see, this is why I need to edit my stuff, because my memory is like a sieve. It's terrible. Um, yeah, okay, right, okay, so that, that's that. <laughs> that's half of you switched off at least, anyway. Right, second thing I want to bring up is... I haven't been on this bike, which is my BMW R850R for... Oh, must be four weeks, I reckon, five weeks. I went to uh, go out on it yesterday, pushed the button, and guess what happened? Nothing. Yeah, I had a, a dead battery. So I've had to plug it into my optimizer for overnight um, and get that recharged up. So, yeah, why, out of all the bikes that I've uh, ridden, you know, loads of them over the last year, why did I end up with a second bike for a first of all? And of all the bikes I picked, I picked in 1998. I could have got something newer and up the budget a bit. But I picked a 1998 BMW R850R. Well, if I could find somewhere to pull over. No, I don't really want to go in the crematorium. That's a bit miserable, isn't it? Um, yeah, why did I buy it? Well... I had an itch which I needed to scratch, uh, which was a, a box for owning, owning, I had a horrible feeling my camera had stopped then, uh, owning a boxer engine. I wouldn't say I'm a massive fan of a boxer engine, but over the time that I have ridden the boxers, whether it's the 1250 RS or the 1250 GS or uh, whatever else I've ever ridden, the uh, R9 Scrambler. Um, there's something about a BMW engine which is just, well, I can't even put it into words, really. It's just the, the way that they run, the character of the engine is really, really nice. Um, now, I bought a 1998 model, really, because I wanted something with not too much electronics, is the first reason. 
Secondly, I wanted something which was... Um, Oh, no, I've lost it again, you see? I would normally cut that out. Yeah, I wanted something that was uh, that was old school, and, and I wanted something with solid engineering. Um, and every little bit on this bike, although, no, although they messed up on the ABS systems, which luckily I haven't got on this bike anyway, everything that's been done on this bike was by people, you know, prior to 1998, he wanted to build, or German people should I say, he wanted to build solid German engineering and build everything like a tank. There wasn't none of this, oh we can save money here and we can um, make this out of an alloy to save uh, to save money. Have I gone over the 10, no I'm still on, I'm on 10 minutes, going to have to wrap this up now. Um, yeah, there wasn't any cutbacks or any try trying to save money, they just wanted to build a good solid machine and you know that's how they used to build these BMWs they weren't to everybody's taste even back then but just the way that it rides it's just so smooth the suspension is fantastic with its tally lever suspension and uh, shaft drive which I can take or leave I mean some people are, are really big on shaft drive aren't they but for me it's great until it goes wrong and you got a 500 pound bill I'd rather sort of change the chain and sprockets, uh, you know, a few times rather than spending that. But, hey-ho, that's the way it is. And, uh, yeah, and it was uh, £1,700, which is nothing. You know, I could probably sell it tomorrow for more than that, because they have, strangely, they have actually gone up in price. Um, and just the way that it delivers its talk you know, from really low down, you know, sort of 1500 RPM. You can be going up a hill and you can open it up and it doesn't feel like you've got anything left and then it'll just do it. It'll just start pulling. So for me, you know, I do consider a GS, but it's just, they're big old bikes to store in the garage, aren't they? Where's somewhere with a view which I could take? You know what I'm like, I like to give you a view. Uh... Uh, let's go down there. Down by the old uh, Exeter wall. Over there, you see that wall over there? That used to be the outskirts and Exeter used to be inside that. Which is, you know, looking back at it now, it's absolutely tiny. Would have been tiny in there compared to what Exeter is now. That'll do. Um, where's the stand got on there? Yeah, so that's why I bought this bike, and uh, I just really enjoy riding it. As soon as I, I might have a thumbnail there as well. As soon as I get off that bike and pack it away, I want to bring it out and, and ride again. Yes, it's not in the best condition. Uh, look, probably looks better on the camera than what it does in real life. Um, it's not in the best condition, but it's a bike that I just love to ride. Really enjoy riding it. Tires are crap as well. I can't wait to be able to get rid of them but that's uh, a three or four hundred pound job and also this here as well I uh, took this bike on the saddlebags ride out across Dartmoor and I was going to put the flask coder there just for the day but it became so iconic I just couldn't get rid of it in the end so there it is <laughs> it's going to be there forever now and I sent my uh, mate one as well up in Derby so he's got one on his uh, trans up so uh, yeah just lovely to look at I just love the engineering and the uh, what do you call it the box engine sticking out the side you know it's not only characterful but it's like <sighs> how do I explain it I don't even like the way it starts it is a tractor but you know the Brambo brakes which need bleeding and uh, updating uh, tally lever suspension and uh, the power lever suspension at the back. You know, it just run, rides nice, no vibrations. Just beautiful. But I wouldn't be able to afford, well, I probably could have afforded a new one if I really wanted to, but I don't want to buy, uh, you know, a brand new BMW because I like the simplicity. It goes to show, all the bikes that I ride, 
and I've got the Honda NC 750X as well and if all the bikes I ride I still come home to this I look at the NC and I think oh yeah good bike but it's more of a tool to me that bike but this is the bike I really like to ride and a lot of people miss that that's the of all the bikes that I get to ride I realize now that I think a lot of people are missing out because they don't get to ride uh, something like a Royal Enfield 500 which my mate Saddlebags know about or you know a bike like this maybe it's just me obviously it's all personal choice at the end of the day we all like our bikes for different reasons uh, but you know like I say I paid nothing for it you know great big chunky metal handlebars as well you know nice nice clocks you know where do, where do you get a clock these days it's all digital everything isn't it so yeah just love it uh, what am I doing for time? Well, I've gone over. I'm going to have to leave it there. Uh, I wanted to carry on talking, really. I think I had three subjects. I think I've only done two, haven't I? But I've just done a... Uh <laughs> Sounds like a tractor, doesn't it? Just starting up. But yeah, I've just done a review on... Uh the Sinus... One of the Sinus bikes. I can't remember what it's called now. Oh, Sinus Hoodlum. And... Uh So I kind of worn myself out anyway, uh, talking. So it's a good time to do this video, really, because um, I had a oh, nice view up here. I could have taken you here, couldn't I? That's the Exeter Key down there. River comes around, like so. Lots of nice pubs down there. Great for a night out. That doesn't happen now because i got kids. So me and the missus don't really get to go out, but one day I shall take her down there on the bike if I can really twist her arm, <laughs> and uh, we'll go for a drink. Um, what's I saying? Yeah. So anyway, I've, I've reviewed this in this Hidlam today. I took it out for I think it's an hour and a half just to get some shots and uh, some video done. Got home and uh, oh, good old GoPro. It rarely lets me down, but. I got back and there was absolutely nothing on the memory card. Not even a corrupted file. There was just one uh, 10 so second shot of me doing a camera test, <laughs> ironically. And after that, it, it just, uh, there's just nothing left. Right, anyway, so that is my goofy bastard uh, challenge done. I'm sorry that it's so long. I can't believe I let it flow as much as what I did, actually. Um, but thanks for the challenge Goofy I think uh, you definitely started something there mate and uh, um, yeah I think it's a great challenge to do that and it, it certainly is you know it gave us a, a decent uh, challenge to do that was quite uh, helpful to us because we all want to be more fluent on camera and uh, yeah I've I, I done well on that one I surprised myself I had about 10 minutes of... Was I in the right lane then? Yeah, I was, yeah. Uh, yeah, I had about 10 minutes of... Not remembering anything. But uh, the other minute, there was some content there. So I hope all work is well over there for my American friends. Uh, including Walt in PA as well. Uh, Code Grey. Uh... Oh dear, I'm going to forget somebody now. Well, I'm going to leave it there, because I can't remember the everybody else now. And my American friends. Louis? Um, Louis? Uh, anyway, thank you very much for watching this. It's just a bit of a bonus top-up video. Thanks to uh, Goofy Bastard. Uh, God knows where you got that name from, mate, but uh, I have all the names you could have picked. But good on you. And uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next video. Whoops. See you on... <laughs> See you in the next video guys, cheers! On the floor. Yes, you're the one that I've been searching for Now you don't have to worry I'm yours forevermore Cause you're the one that I've been searching for